this is the kind of road you get around here where um, you're driving along and you run over fish. No kidding. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. I was out the other day, I saw a Chesapeake needlefish run over in the road. It's like, you, should, you shouldn't be running over, running over fish in the roads. You know, if you walk around anywhere around here, you start seeing clear examples of where the, the ecosystems have changed from, you know, right over there, they got clover and, and regular grass, and down here, you know, 20 meters away sure. is, is a tidal ecosystem. Yeah. You walk into these people's front lawns and, and they have marsh grass growing in their front lawns, so you know that, that their front lawn's becoming a wetland. Yeah. You can see how it slopes in. You can almost find the old creek bed. Yeah. So all that's left is Haven Creek boat ramp. And people go, Haven Creek, is that the creek? It's like, no, that's an old ferry slip. The creek is actually up there. So, I mean, this is a great example of, of what's going on. So you got this creek and it's still, it's still tidally connected. Okay. Or the water will still run up the old creek bed. When we get winds from the north, um, it drives the water up. And with the, with the higher, with the rise in sea level, everything gets a little higher, the wind comes along, and the, the water finds the old creek bed and it runs along. And I'm not kidding, I'd stand in that field with my boots on and the water would just come up out of the ground. <laughs> and so this is what you get in the older cities, this is what you get in these old legacy creeks that are actually bringing water back up into the neighborhoods. Sure. What's really cool though is the city of Norfolk, recognizing that this wanted to be a wetland, made it a wetland. So what they've done is they've put two restoration wetlands up there to deal with flooding okay, and Okay, is that stormwater. kind of that higher vegetation Yeah, that's where right that bridge is. It, used to, it right. used to be just a big flat field. But um, a few years ago, they put that wetland in there as a way of treating uh -huh. stormwater. Now the problem is, um, there are also a lot of other things in this creek bed, like that dog park over there, which when we get a good storm, this lot floods, that parking lot floods, the water runs over there, picks up all that poop and brings it back into the yeah. river. Well, at least the dog park's getting cleaned out on a regular basis. Yeah, but the river is <laughs> turning into polluted, a polluted mess. So there's actually some cool work going on um, over at Old Dominion University where they're, they're measuring not where the water goes when it floods, but what now is the water bringing back into the, into the river. This creek and that river are part of the Chesapeake Bay watershed, so we're under um, a federal order to clean up the water and so now it's like OMG <laughs> yeah what are we gonna do with this climate change thing because we never accounted for for waters coming higher and higher and taking all of the oil and trash and dog poop and everything else back into the river mm -hmm. this was supposed to stay dry you know so you got a changing ecosystem you got waters coming higher so you know as you look around and you start poking around you can find all sorts of evidence of the change. Why is that marsh plant, um, you know, 30, 30 meters from the shore living in yeah. a parking lot? If you had to guess, how, how recent have those popped up or have they been here for a no, couple years now? No, they haven't been here long because I, I first noticed them probably seven or eight years ago. So we started working on sea level rise about 12 years ago. And that's when we first started noticing stuff like this, um, mm -hmm. you know, to where you walk around and. Like if you go over there, it's that's all Iva there. That's okay. all that's all marsh yeah. plant. So anyway, that's why we developed the app. It yeah, it man. allows you to to go out and just basically drop a pin around where the edge of the water is, and you right. get um, you get a uh, it can be exported. The GPS coordinates can be exported as a just an Excel file. And then um, we're working with some modelers at the Virginia Institute of Marine Science, and they're actually developing a flood layer. So they, with each okay. storm, they know, oh, here's where it goes when a storm looks like this. Here's where it goes when a storm looks like that. And so eventually what we're hoping is we can develop predictive models. Wow, to where, that would be awesome. Yeah, 24 Based hours out. Goes. Yeah, they'll go, hey, Delaware Avenue is going to be closed tomorrow at noon. So don't even try to go down there with your, where did the UPS truck go? With your UPS truck. Right. This is Spartina. Spartina grows, whoops, it's getting real wet here. Spartina grows between low tide and high tide. Right? So you've got Spartina growing here. And again, you know, what, it didn't used to be this way. When, 
this this has all happened within the last six or seven years, seven, eight years. So, you know, you can see the, the slow progression. Let me get out of here without getting wet. So here's the interim solution. <laughs> Be before you spend the, f the three, four million dollars to raise the road, you spend a few hundred bucks on a depth indicator. Yeah. I can probably get through six inches if I'm okay, foolish enough. Ask, if it's tidal water, I won't go in it because the salt gets on your brakes oh, and it yeah. screws it up. Yeah. This is Phragmites here. So this is sort of at the back end of the tidal zone. It gets wet. It gets wet often enough, but not often enough to, to scare off that plant. There's a city that actually has, has signs along their flooding streets that have no wake zone. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's a city ordinance because the people who lived along those streets were getting water pushed up onto their porches. I so, can honestly say I've never heard of that. Yeah. This is Spartina. Okay. If you, uh, if you wet your finger uh -huh. and pull it along it and taste it, you'll taste the salt. The, the plant, it's a really cool plant. Oh yeah, it, real salty. It, yeah, it lives, it lives in, in a salty environment which will usually kill a plant. But it's got a way of taking the salt out of the water and then exuding it, basically expelling it from the plant. Interesting. Yeah, so you can you can you can taste the the salt that it's getting rid of. So and then here, this is odd. You got a storm pipe above. Oh yeah. Above the level of the Look street because they're not inter they're, they're interested in the water going <laughs> going back out. So this is like completely reversed engineered. Yeah. If you go to the old, old maps in Norfolk, you'll see that there was a marsh gut in here. This was, this was all a wetland. Filled it in, build it out, build a road, no problem. Tick tock, 80, 90 years later, now we got a problem. Yeah. I mean, it's like this all the flipping time. You got, you got marsh grass in people's front lawns. So then the solution is you go from there to there and you raise the road and it's, you know, maybe, maybe this is only a million bucks. But then you've got this wall that's gonna, yeah, really. You got this wall that's gonna block the water coming this way. So these houses then would flood from the rainfall. So then you've gotta pump the water out. So again, it's not just raising the road, it's a road and a pump station. Yeah. You know, like you said, just a million bucks. Well, this street's a million, that was three, there's two there, that, you know. You begin to add this stuff up and it gets to be pretty expensive. So this house was raised by, with a combination, mostly FEMA money, but private money. So it was elevated. So all they did was they jacked the house up and they built a garage underneath it. This house, for some reason, hasn't been elevated. And I don't know, I don't know whether it's in the waiting list yeah. or what the deal is. This house floods a lot. Mm -hmm. But if I wanted to buy that house, I couldn't find that out from the owner. I couldn't find that out from official records. Mm -hmm. So there's no disclosure of flood risk to somebody coming from outside. And this, this town, this region is, uh, there's a big turnover because we're a big military city. So you get people coming here from Lawrence, Kansas, who grew up in Lawrence, Kansas, or Ohio, heaven <laughs> yeah. forbid, and they don't understand tidal stuff and they just, they're in here for a three year tour with the Navy. They buy this house or rent this house and they go, OMG, what's with all this water? Yeah, all we know is corn and corn and beans and beans. Yeah. Yeah, and water that doesn't move. It's a lake, okay? Yeah. Well, this stuff moves. So, you know, that's, that's part of the problem is, is how you get, how you deal with a fairly transient population yeah. that we have. So this used to be a park. It was at this level, you know, it was just a flat park and people would play here. And, yeah. But it kept getting flooded so often that the grass stopped growing because the salt water was killing the grass. It used to be a wetland. This is what it used to look like, yeah. the whole neighborhood. And we filled it in, built houses on it. Well, what they did was they scraped the stuff off that we used to fill it in and they brought the wetland back. So, so now you got a wetland that, that brings in wildlife and uh, uh, treats the water. And but see how high up they put that heat pump that, that's on the stilts over oh, there? Oh, yeah, okay. And you can see a lot of people have done that. Those, those heat pumps there are up three, three and a half feet. Yeah, okay. It's one of the things people do is they elevate their heating and cooling systems so they don't exactly. flood out. There's about um, 900 houses in Norfolk that are waiting to be elevated. Really? Yeah, and the money, the money comes in, they only do three or four of them a year. We calculated that at the rate the money comes in, you'd wait, if you're at the end of the line in Norfolk, you'd wait 188 years before your house would get lifted. Like I think the feds pay 80, 85%. You and I pay the overwhelming amount of it. Man. And, I mean, the idea is that we're not paying 
for the damages on the house because once it's elevated, whatever's not in the living space, FEMA's not going to pay for yeah. it. So you and I are not going on the hook for that. On the other hand, you know, does it make sense? Would it would have been easier to buy that house out? Because see, now that that house is there, I, as a citizen in Norfolk, have to maintain the street. So I paid the 1.2 million dollars, yeah. and. So then it, you start doing the addition on it. It's like, well, wouldn't it have been easier to just buy those houses out yeah. and make them a wetland? You don't get tax revenue off a wetland, but then you're not having to spend a million two to raise those right. streets every right. every few decades. Right. the other street kind of, yeah. Yeah, you do this life cycle costing, and it's like you make a different set of decisions then. What's been the effect on insurance premiums? Um, the insurance, the flood insurance, is the premium are, is set by the federal government. The federal government runs flood insurance. Homeowners insurance covers like fire and wind, right. but flooding is the is the federal program, okay. uh, the national flood insurance program. So like that house there, probably would have paid four thousand dollars a year in flood insurance when it was at the base level. Okay. When it gets elevated, it's out of the flood risk zone. It'll only pay five hundred dollars a year. Gotcha. So is that kind of one of the big appeals for people to raise their houses than the, the yeah. cost of insurance? Yeah. The insurance just goes away, yeah. basically. But, you know, especially if you can get the feds to pay right. most of it. On the other hand, if you got to wait 188 years. So some people are actually doing their own home elevations. Oh, are they? And then there's all sorts of other little tricks you can pull to get your flood insurance premiums uh -huh. down. Like what are some of those? Um, flood vents in the, in the basement, elevating your utilities, maybe not as high as that one, but elevating your, your heat pump, okay. your, your uh, air conditioning taking your duct work that runs under the house and putting it above. There's a whole lot of a little things. And so there are companies now that'll come along and they'll go, okay, you know, spend 2,000 bucks here doing this and it'll reduce your premiums 500 a year. It'll pay for itself in four years. And people are going, okay. And then there are people filling in their basements. I mean, in that, that stretch over there, there are people who have, actually have basements. And that really kills you because that's your lowest living space. Yeah, but if you flood your base, if you fill your basement in, then that becomes your first gotcha. floor. So now they're just saying the hell with it. Yeah. And it all just seems so backwards. Yeah, I know. It really does. I know. Yeah, I'll good send to you meet you. Good to meet you as well. Good, to meet you. good luck. Appreciate you taking the time today. All right. So. Yeah. All right. Take care. All right. Take care.